The action of the second part of the story begins. A few days after the events of the first part in the Duchy of Rosaria, there our protagonist meets Lady Rendor and Lady Chidargi. The girls stood right in front of the protagonist, and then Lady Rendor said she was very grateful for the invitation, and Lady Chadargi thanked Lady Rosaria for the invitation, and mentioned that she was honored. We learn that the protagonists of that letter, arrived at the Duke's estate, all went together to Elena's private library, where they had a mug of tea and talked among themselves. Lady Rosaria says the tea is very fragrant this time, so she tells her friends to drink it quickly before it gets cold. While Lady Rendor asks Elena if this is her personal library, to which she replies in the affirmative. Elena also notes that this is where she most often works or studies. After the girls talk, Lady Chadargi looks around and notices the beautiful decorations of the house. She says she has been in many houses, but has never seen such beautiful rooms. The girl looks delighted with the beauty of the Duke's estate. While Elena is drinking tea, the girls talk to each other, and Lady Chadargi says that all heirs are probably entitled to something like this, but the other girl is not interested only in the fact that there are a lot of books here. She emphasizes that there are even more books in this library than in theirs. Elena, meanwhile, looks at the girls and thinks that they can envy, wonder, and admire it all as much as they want, while she also thinks that she has not in vain prepared a treat for them. At this point, the maid, who is also with the girls, does not ask Elena why bring everything here. And would it not be better to receive the guests in the living room of the main building? Elena says that in normal times, she would have done exactly that. But today is an unusual day, because she wants to show something unusual to the girls. The maid is very surprised at the words of her mistress, well cannot say anything, and decides just to see what Elena will show them. The butler also enters the library. He apologizes to Elena for disturbing her, and says that he has brought a question that requires her personal consideration. While we learn that the girl herself asked the butler to bring her some document for the view when the girls arrive. Seeing her butler with a stack of documents in his hands, the girl says that he is not distracting her, and he should not apologize for it, and also tells him to bring her the documents. After she received the documents in her hands, the girl begins to read them diligently, and talks to the butler about something. The girl's guests are incredibly surprised that she solves some issues on her own and watch her with amazement. But the girl at that moment hands the documents back to her butler and says that they are all right. After that, Elena apologizes to her guests and says that she had to take on some of the duties of the Duke. Also at this point, the protagonist seems to wonder mentally at her alleged friends. Do they like her image of the heiress? The girls continue to look admiringly at Elena. They say that there is nothing wrong with her being distracted, and emphasizes that she looked very serious. According to Lady Chadarga, she admires the main character. Also, the girl calls her sister. Lady Rosaria is very surprised that Lady Chatterjee called her sister. The protagonist thinks that this is a very strange address. While she thinks about it, Lady Rendor tells the protagonist that in general, she should not worry. After all, they are only happy to see her new image. The protagonist thanks the girl for such a flattering review of herself and thinks at this point that the girls should not stop there. She wants them to open her more of their desires that lurk in their hearts. Lady Rendor asks the protagonist if she understands that Elena is the heiress because she is the only daughter of the Duke. Elena looks right at the girl and thinks that she hit the bullseye. We learn that the protagonist invited them for a reason partly because they were the ones who treated her best at the last tea party, but also because they have talent and something in common. Elena begins to describe Rebecca Rendor. We learn that she is the second child of the Earl of Rendor's family. The girl's lineage from generation to generation keeps under control a huge number of merchants, and the profits from the small business she manages in her 15 years are unimaginable. We also learn a detailed description of Bella Chedargi. It turns out that this girl is only 14 years old, and she was born in the Boron family of famous explorers. Also, the girl has an amazing photographic memory. After we have learned the description of both girls, we learn what they have in common in Elena's opinion. And what they have in common is that they are in many ways superior to the eldest sons, who are the heirs of the families. 
In Elena's opinion, the daughters are always overlooked. Finally, the protagonist answers Lady Randor's question. She asks why Lady Randor thinks she is the heiress only because there are no other children in the family. The girl is surprised at such a question from Elena and says that she thinks so because there are no other children in the family besides her, and in other cases the eldest son usually becomes the heir. Then calmly and Elena asks if Lady Chatterjee does not know that the law has been amended so that the other children can become heirs. Randor tries to say something back to the protagonist, but because she is lost and doesn't know what to say, she is helped by Bella, who says it's a strange option because not everyone is willing to go against tradition. Rebecca agrees with Bella's words and says that's exactly what she wanted to say. But Elena emphasizes that tradition is exactly what she hates. She looks at her friends and asks what's stopping her from becoming an heiress if she has all the right abilities to do so. According to the protagonist, she showed her skills and proudly took the place of the heiress. The girls are surprised by this answer. But then the joyful Bella says that from her words, it smoothly follows that all her misdeeds, or to be more precise, tossing, were connected with reflections concerning the place of the air. Elena says that it was like that. She also remembers how she could not find a place when it became known that her cousin could become the heir to the family Rosaria. The girl is a little sad about it and says that she is still ashamed to remember it. Bella, in turn, tells the protagonist that she has nothing to be ashamed of and says that if she were in Helena's place, she would behave in the same way. According to the girl, the main thing that Helena quickly realized everything and changed. Also, according to Bella now, Elena is a real role model. After she finished her speech, the girl asked Lady Rendor if she's with her, to which the girl received a positive answer. Elena is very surprised by the words of the girls and thinks that she could not have expected these two to react in such a way. She thinks about it a little more. She tells the girls that after their words, she is convinced that all the effort she has put in has not been in vain. The girls are indeed very pleased to hear the praise of the girls and such warm words. As night falls outside and the girls have finished their tea, Lady Rosaria thinks that the meeting has gone much better than she could have hoped for for it has completely changed her impression of the girls. The main character recalls that she told the girls that she likes people who know their strengths and actively use them. At that time, the girls did not understand what Elena is talking about. But the protagonist added that she wanted her friends to know that she is always ready to help those who want to reveal their talents. And for her, it does not matter whether it is a man or a woman. Then Elena's words lit a fire in their hearts. Elena gets up from her seat, where she has been sitting up to this point, and leaves thinking that although now the girls have not fully understood the meaning of her words, but soon they will understand everything, and then they will have to come to her for help. While Elena is heading towards the exit of the room, the sky opens up behind her, and lightning strikes. From the loud sounds of lightning and thunder, the girl is very much frightened. When she turns back to look at the weather outside, Elena notices that it's pouring rain outside. She's a little surprised at this, because not so long ago it was sunny and now it's pouring rain. The action of the story moves at the same time, to the estate of Count Rendor, where the Count is having dinner with his family and tells his son to go to the library after he has finished eating. When the girl hears about it, she says that she will also go to the library with her brother. All the family members are a little surprised by this, and the brother asks his sister what she is talking about. At this time, a joyful girl holding some documents in her hand informs her family that she too would like to learn how to trade properly. She asks that the family take it seriously because it is not just words. Rebecca also says that she has proof that she too is worthy of training. After she notices the surprised faces of all her family members, she asks them what is happening to them. But her arrogant brother mocks the girl a little and asks her if he's right that she means to say she's going to fight him for the air. Rebecca is very surprised by this question. She says that she had no such plans in mind. She said she just wanted to study more and start helping her family. Rebecca is very surprised at her father's behavior. But her brother continues to sneer at her and asks her if she really thinks that running a small business is enough to be the heir to the family. After these words, Rebecca's brother also gets up from the table 
and informs the others that it is time for him to go too. At the moment when the guy gets up and heads for the exit, he snatches from the girl's hands all the documents she had with her. Rebecca is very surprised by such actions, but after that the guy scattered all her pieces of paper and told the girl to stop doing nonsense. Rebecca was a little upset but immediately rushed to collect all her papers. While she was picking up the papers, Rebecca began to wonder why her family was doing this to her. At the same moment, her mom stepped on one of the papers she wanted to pick up. A woman turns to her daughter, who has already started crying, and asks her if she really thinks she can become an heiress because she supposedly understands math better than her older brother. The girl tries to say that she never wanted to become an heiress, but her mother doesn't let the girl say anything and tells Rebecca not to interrupt her. Also, the woman emphasizes that it doesn't matter if the girl wants it or not, if her greed has no limit. She is about to leave and tells her daughter to think hard again about what happened today. She also asks Rebecca to get rid of the bench before the woman does it herself. Rebecca is still crying as she gathers her papers and wonders at her mother's words. She is left all alone in her room while it is pouring rain outside. She remembers the words that were said to her when she was at Lady Rosary's. In the girl's mind, she says that the Lady of the Rosary wanted them all to know that she is ready to help those who want to discover their talents, and she does not care whether it is a man or a woman. These thoughts seem to light up the girl's way, and she finally stops crying. At this time, Elena looks outside and concludes that the rain is pouring like a bucket. The girl is a little upset about this because in the evening she wanted to go for a walk, at once, in the room to Elena comes one maid and says that the girl came to visit. Elena is very much surprised by this. She wonders who decided to come to her so late. Yes, and in such unfavorable weather. The maid says that Lady Rendor has come to see Elena. Elena looks very surprised that the girl has decided to visit her so late and immediately goes to her guest, while one of the maids is wiping tears from Lady Rendor's face. And when the girl notices that Elena has come to meet her, she turns to the protagonist and asks if there is anything Elena can do to help her. After that, Elena took her new friend to the table to have tea again. The guest apologizes for coming to Elena so late, but Elena says that it's not a big deal and asks her friend if she is at least a little better. Lady Rendor emphasizes that she is ashamed to have disturbed Elena, but Elena tells the girl that if she came at such a late hour, something serious must have happened. Elena starts to put a little pressure on her guest and asks if she will tell her problem. Then Lady Rendor decides to tell the main character about her problem. Lady Rendor then told the protagonist exactly what she expected, after which Elena asked if she had understood correctly that Rebecca wanted to know if Elena could help her decide where to place the heir. Elena tells her friend that she has given her problem some thought, and her answer is no. According to Elena, she can't help Rebecca in any way, and Lady Rendor is very surprised by this. Rebecca is a little upset about this and says that she couldn't have hoped for another answer from Elena. But Elena immediately tells the girl, who once again starts crying, that Rebecca should get it right. According to Elena, her answer doesn't mean that she is denying the girl other help. Rebecca is even more surprised and wonders what Elena is talking about. Elena tells Rebecca that the right of inheritance, even the emperor himself cannot easily intervene. But according to the girl, there are many other ways she can help Rebecca. Lady Rendor glowed. After Elena's words, she thanked the main character, and Elena, who was looking at her friend, thinks that she looks very nice. But Elena emphasizes that before she helps Rebecca, she has to ask her something. Lady Rendor wonders what Elena's question is, and then the protagonist asks how the girl evaluates herself. Rebecca is surprised by this question, but starts to tell how everything happened. According to the girl, everything started from childhood. According to her, she first learned to count, and only then learned to read. At that time, the girl's favorite place was the market. She loved the market, precisely because there she saw the flow of money, according to Rebecca, and her abilities are some of the greatest in the history of the Rendor family, comma. And it is for this reason that the girl believes she is worthy to bear this surname. Elena is happy with the girl's answer and thinks that finally Rebecca understands it. Then the protagonist says that it is clear to her, and so she will show her something. At that moment, Elena gives the girl some envelope Rebecca is surprised, and asks what it is. 
But Elena just says that the girl should open it, and then she will understand it herself. Then Rebecca decides to take the envelope, and opening it sees that there is only one word written there. The letter says the word tomato. Rebecca is very surprised to read this, and turning to the main character asks if there will be any problems with them. Elena is a little happy, and thinks that her friend is quite clever and realized everything only by one clue. Then the protagonist tells Rebecca that in the near future with tomatoes will begin a shortage. According to Elena, a delegation from another country will soon come to the Imperial Palace, and then they will make a major trade deal for tomatoes. Elena also tells her friend that the supply of tomatoes will exceed 70%. Rebecca is surprised by this, and immediately she starts to thank Elena for giving her such important information. Then the girl remembers how she was humiliated by her parents and brother. She thinks that even with this information she is unlikely to succeed. She thanks Elena for her help and says that she does not think she can cope with it. She claims that the funds she could dispose of are very limited and soon they may not be available at all. Elena is surprised by this answer and asks the girl if it is true that this stops her. Also, the protagonist says that she has a solution to this problem. She gives her friend a check of some kind. Rebecca's eyes immediately sparkled. She looked at the check, and then Elena asked the girl if it was enough for her. Rebecca thought that it was enough for her because it was the check of the Rosary family whose wealth could only be envied. Rebecca takes the check and says that it will be enough and that she will even have some money left over. Elena says that in that case she will consider it her help in becoming Rebecca. Then the protagonist asks Rebecca to reveal her talents to the fullest by using her help. And Rebecca, who almost cries because of this, thinks that finally her abilities have been appreciated. She starts to cry very loudly and presses the check that Elena gave her to her chest. The girl wonders why she doesn't hear these warm words from her family, but hears them from Elena. After Rebecca finished crying, Elena asks her friend if she has already decided how she is going to act in such a situation. The girl says that she already has a plan. The girl grabs the check and asks Elena not to worry about it, because her help will not go to waste. Elena still looks at her friend with disbelief and asks her if she is sure she can handle it, to which she gets a positive answer. In the girl's opinion, I was now the easiest thing left to her. She went home, where just after the girl got out of the carriage, she heard the voice of her mother who was waiting for her. After the girl got out of the carriage, her mom immediately started yelling at her and asking, where was she all this time? The girl bows a little to her mom and apologizes to her for coming so late. She says that she is sorry that she caused trouble for her and her brother with her temper. The woman looks at her daughter with a kind of distrust and emphasizes that she hopes that these are not empty words and the girl really regrets what she has done. Rebecca tells her mother that it is true and also mentions that her business will be over as her mother wanted it to be. The woman is very happy about this news and starts to praise her daughter telling her that she is doing a good job. The mother takes her daughter by the hand and pulls her into the house saying that the girl is probably very tired, she should get some rest. The girl is a little upset about this behavior of her mother. She notices that her mother has a very gentle hand that comes only when she obeys it. And she also gets upset that she can only live in this house when she obediently fulfills the whims of the other members of her family. The girl decides that if it goes on like this, she would rather give up everything than stay here another day. According to her, now she will live by her own rules, and show all the family members who she really is. The Rendor clan, of which her family is so proud, will soon belong to her, and she will be an unquestioning mistress. After a while, Elena had guests again, but this time their composition changed, and another girl arrived, Rebecca. She said that this room was very beautiful, and another girl said that she had never seen such a beautiful greenhouse in her life. At that moment, Elena was already waiting for them at the table, and told her guests that they could go to the table as well. Rebecca said that they hadn't seen Elena for a long time, and Bella told the girl that her greenhouse was beautiful. Elena thanked her new friends for the praise. Then another girl, who also arrived with Elena's friends, said hello to the main character. We learned that this girl's name is Mabel Earn. It also turns out that Mabel is a girl who will help the protagonist in the future to cure the epidemic that will arise in the Empire. 
The protagonist decided to meet her more often because she remembered the original story. The girls have already sat down at the table, and then Maybelle began to wonder, what are the names of plants from the greenhouse? And notice that the flowers here are very beautiful. Elena smirks at her new friend. She notices that the girl, as in the original story, is a flower lover. And Elena wonders if she should start a conversation with the girl. She says she's glad Mabel liked her greenhouse. But according to the protagonist, compared to the first prince's secret garden, her greenhouse is nothing. Mabel was very surprised when she heard about the secret garden of the first prince. But the main heroine, seeing that she was able to interest the girl, realizes that her plan succeeds and goes as it should. She says she recently visited the first prince's secret garden, and according to the protagonist's description, his garden is a place with many plants she's seen for the first time. Mabel admires the words of the main character and says that she heard rumors about it, but at the same time the girl is a little surprised that in his garden there are many rare plants, According to Mabel, after such a colorful description of Elena, she already wants to go there. It turns out that Lloyd's garden is actually the place Rosetta told Mabel about in the original story. And the plant that was found in the garden of the first prince was the raw material for the treatment of the worst epidemic that would soon break out in the empire. Also in the original story, Mabel developed a cure from the plant but gave all the credit to Rosetta because it was Elena who showed and told her about the garden. Elena, seeing how delighted the girl is by the words about the secret garden, says that in that case she can try to ask the first prince to give the girls the opportunity to visit it. Mabel gets even more excited about it. The girl looks directly at the protagonist and wonders if she can really use such an honor. But Elena says that of course she can, and she sends a letter to her residence when she knows the date. Elena realizes that in this case, all the laurels of Rosetta will go to her. She thinks that she is certainly a little ashamed to realize that steals someone else's merits. But in the opinion of the girl, it is a matter of life and death. So she asks for understanding from the readers. Elena then says that Lady Urn seems to like plants. And she emphasizes that she has heard from Lady Rendor that the girl is very good with herbs. And she asks Lady Urn if she would like to become a doctor. Bella is a little surprised that the girl wants to be a researcher and notes that they don't have as good a reputation as doctors. Lady Urn says she knows it's true, but the girl emphasizes that if she can create new medicines, then for her such fame will be much more pleasant than the fame of some ordinary healer. In this case, the girl seems to glow, and the protagonist thinks that the girl has very pure intentions, and against her background, Elena herself looks like a fallen man. After that, Elena says that she is ready to support her new friend, and if she needs any help, she can turn to Elena at any time. Lady Shadargi also supports the girl and says that she is also ready to help at any time. After these words, Bella seems to become a little sad. Elena notices it and realizes that apparently she was able to motivate her. Iran, or later, was going to ask Elena for help. After a while, Bella is already at home. She looks out the window and thinks about the fact that Lady Urn was beautiful. The girl admired the way she confidently talked about her dream and at the same time looked very radiant. Bella also thinks about the fact that compared to her friends she has nothing at all. She considers herself a born girl who only moves through life. The girl thinks about it. She becomes a little jealous because she also wants to speak confidently about the business she dreams of doing. She immediately decides that being so gloomy does not suit her at all and getting up from her seat thinks that she should think about what she can do. The girl realizes that she likes to read books and get new information, according to her. Through them, she can learn about things from every corner of the world, although she is not quite sure how she can use her abilities. The girl starts to write something on a piece of paper and thinks that by writing down her wandering thoughts, she will be able to understand what she wants to do. But she still needs help for the specifics. But suddenly, it seems to hit her. The action moves. On a few days later in the Duchy of Rosary, Bella arrived at Elena's, and then she told Elena that she wanted to ask her for some advice. Bella says she's been thinking about her future lately. She says she listened to Elena and Lady Urn talk at the last meeting and wanted to do something about it. Elena is happy about it, and says that she is honored that she was able to be a good influence on her friend, but asks what Bella wanted to talk to her about. Lady Chadargi says she is embarrassed, 
but asks Elena not to laugh at herself. You can see from the girl's face that she is a little embarrassed, but Elena tells the girl not to worry because she will definitely not laugh. Then Bella tells Elena that she wants to create a rumor shop. The protagonist is very much surprised by such an idea and does not understand what is the point of the rumor shop. But Bella starts to describe to the girl her idea, according to Lady Chadarga. She thought about the value of knowledge, according to her books are sold for money, and a person with knowledge teaches others being a teacher, and it also costs money. Then the girl asks what about rumors, she clarifies that they are just stories that pass from person to person, and they contain a lot of information. She gives an example of such a rumor, and says that it is, for example, nearby wandering the yard, and people should know that they need to be careful. And if we consider it on a broader scale, there is information about market movements and the international situation. According to the girl, information is power. She also specifies that even during negotiations or trade between countries, if you know the rumors about the country beforehand, it will be much easier to reach an agreement. Elena liked the idea and said it was like a repository of information. We also learn that Elena first thought that the girl will hesitate because she has no special abilities. But the girl was smart enough, so she immediately found her way. And in the right way, at the same moment, Bella says that Elena understood her idea correctly was also saying that it was because of this that she thought it would be a good idea to create a store that collects and sells rumors. In her opinion, it would definitely be worth more than just knowledge. Elena looks at the girl a little confused, and at that moment she thought that she was too excited, and that Elena might think her idea was stupid. But Elena immediately becomes excited and delighted, telling Lady Chadarga that she's impressed, and the idea of a store that will sell rumors is wonderful. Bella, who has been very excited, finally cools down from her excitement and asks Elena if she really thinks so and if the girl is joking or if she in turn says that it really is so and her idea is a great one. She says that she is now thinking about how best to promote it. Elena emphasizes that the girl needs to come up with a name for her shop first and she will also need a database of information. The protagonist says she will support her friend in this plan and tells her that they should come up with more specific items and discuss them later on. Lady Shadarji again can't believe what she's heard. She asks Elena if she's serious about this, but Elena says that of course she is. We also learn that Elena thinks that the rumor shop may seem like an ordinary or absurd place, but in her opinion, if you go into it in more detail, the idea is unbelievable. She thinks that there is a rumor that a couple is in a bad mood because of a quarrel. Then the people who know about it will avoid them so as not to fall under the hot hand. Also, the girl realizes that such discord can also happen among a couple of nobles who have power. She realizes that then the quarrel may not be confined to internal conflict, and the forces of the nobles associated with them may begin to move as a result of this quarrel. And if you know about it in advance, the girl realizes that it will be a huge help to her, and she will be more able to control everything that happens around her and turn everything to her advantage. Looking at her friend who is eating a cookie at this moment, the girl thinks about, where did this smart kid come from? And she also decides that she should give her maximum support, because the girl is also a cutie. The action of the story moved to the next day. Elena led her friends to some building, and then Bella asks where they came, but the protagonist says that this is where her friend will dream of her future. Bella doesn't understand what Elena means at first, but then, Elena says that the rumor shop is a place where a lot of people will come unnoticed. And to put it differently, there was a need for knowledge that is easy to find, but with a hidden exit and entrance. Rebecca also emphasizes that she and Elena searched hard for this place for her friend, then looked at the building and realized that it was indeed the most suitable place for her rumor shop. Bella is very excited about it. She asks her friends to go with her and make a contract with the owner. Then Rebecca pulls out some paper and says that the building already belongs to Bella. The girl is very surprised by this. She doesn't understand how it can be. But then, a satisfied Elena reminds her friend that she promised to support her in everything. Apparently, Elena bought this building especially for her friend. After these words, Bella immediately rushed to hug Elena and to thank such a gift. Well, 
or she at this moment realized that now she had in her hands the luck, money, and information, and all this in the future she will be very useful. After a while, Elena walks around her estate, not interested in one of the maids, that with her mother, because recently they have not seen each other at all. The girl thinks that her mother is probably sad, and that's why they need to meet today. But the maid says that her mother is now spending time with a guest. Elena is very surprised to hear about it. She does not understand about what kind of a guest can talk about, because she has not heard anything like that. After that, the girl together with the maid reaches the room where her mother is. From there is heard a loud male laughter. This fact is very alarming to the girl. Elena thinks that the crown prince may be there, calling him a shameless bastard. At the same moment, she rudely opens the door to the room and turns to her mother. But when the girl saw who was in the room, she was surprised to see that it was not the crown prince, but his brother. The guy immediately tells Elena to come to their table and mentions that he has been waiting for her for a long time. But the girl is very surprised and wonders where the first prince came from. The girl sat down at their table and noted that to come without answering the invitation is quite a brave act. The girl also emphasizes that the first prince has a rather enterprising character if he did so. The first prince at this time emphasizes that after that note, he involuntarily wondered whether he should show a little politeness. The protagonist is a little alarmed by his words. But then the guy immediately says his name was Lee Sojun. The girl realizes that the guy was reborn like her and guesses that he was Korean in his past life too. After that, the first prince asked the girl to be brave enough to tell him her name, and later, Elena also told him that her name was Yung Yuna. The guy says he was right in his thinking, and the girl is also reborn, also from Korea. He says it's great because now they will stop checking each other out and start sharing the information they have. The girl suggests that the first prince start sharing, but she wonders how much this man knows about the world in which they were reborn, and how she can benefit from his knowledge. The guy realizes that the girl has decided to turn the tables, which he tells her, and then asks if it is true she is trying to take a comfortable position. But the protagonist says that she came into this world earlier, so she was able to gather more information than the first prince. Because of this, in her opinion, he has to give her a little concession. Lloyd says that the girl is right, and emphasizes that he knows almost everything about the owner of the body in which he found himself, and the state of the empire in which they are. But he is interested in something else. He realizes that the girl was here before him and had time to settle down. He decides to ask the protagonist where they are in general, because the clothes and architecture remind him of medieval Europe, but the world here is clearly different. The girl thought a little about his words and realized that he does not understand anything about the place where they found themselves. At the same moment, the Lloyd and asks if this place is some kind of fantasy world that happens in the movies, and Elena tells him that he is indeed to some extent right. The girl told the first prince that this is the world of the fantasy novel. After that, they exchanged information for a long time, although the girl realizes that it was rather a one-way exchange because the guy did not understand anything. At first, the first prince was shocked by all this, but then gradually began to accept the absurdity of the situation in which they found themselves. He realizes that they found themselves in the world of Roman, in which the main characters are the crown prince and some girl, Elena will die at the hands of the prince, and he is a simple loser. The guy emphasizes that it sounds very ridiculous, but he will definitely have to accept it. Elena says that the guy is easy to convince, so their conversation will be a little easier in the future. Lloyd is a little surprised by this and doesn't understand what conversation we're talking about. And right after that, the girl suggests that he join forces with her because she realizes that it will be much easier for the two of them. She realizes that this union is a union between a villain who is blinded by love and has lost her life, and between a prince who no one wants and who rots in a cold room. Realizing the seriousness of what is happening, she asks the guy if he is ready to conclude the union and at the same time notes that he certainly does not want to repeat the fate of his character from the novel. The first prince says that everything is right and no one would want to repeat the fate. And then, the first prince and Elena shake hands, after which Elena tells him that she counts on him as a partner. 
She immediately takes out a pen or paper and asks the guy if he agrees to make a contract with her. The first principal is a little surprised by this because he didn't expect that they would have to sign a contract. But the girl is very insistent and tells him that there is a saying that a verbal contract is not a contract at all. She is sure that if they put everything on paper, they will not betray each other. And the first principal realizes that he is a man who was betrayed by his own brother and agrees to sign the contract. We also learn that they were both quite self-centered. So they exchanged demands for each other. But in the end, though with difficulty, they were able to agree. In the contract, they signed your house many clauses. But the strangest point among all the others, the girls seemed point five. It was that they can keep their plans secret from each other. Then the protagonist asks whether she is obliged to help the first principal. If there is no special reason for it, Lloyd says that the girl can only help him if she thinks it won't hurt her. Elena is a little surprised by this and asks him if she understood correctly that he means to say that he will act alone. But the guy with a smile on his face says that it's just extra discretion. Also, the guy emphasizes that if it came to the points of their contract, he invites the girl every day to come to him for tea at two o'clock. The girl is surprised by this proposal and asks why it is necessary. But the guy, in order not to answer the girl's question, points her to the contract and to the very clause five that says that they can keep their plans secret from each other. At which point, the protagonist guesses that the first principal planned it is from the beginning. The girl is not lost and says that she too hopes for cooperation on the part of the lad. She emphasizes that at any time she can bring a lady to his garden and asks him to meet the girl in a proper manner. The first prince says that of course he will do so without any difficulty. After a while they have tea in the garden of the first prince. Elena emphasizes that as Lloyd asked and every day comes to have tea with him, but she still does not understand what the prince is trying to achieve. In response to this, the first prince tells her that he expects to catch something. The girl is even more surprised and puzzled. She does not understand what he wants to catch, but the prince again does not give any precise answer and says that he will catch something. Elena is annoyed by his behavior and tells him that she hopes his catch will be a big one, but she thinks about the fact that the prince has never once responded normally to her and she is quite annoyed. Suddenly the prince gets up from his seat and says that their time is up. Then he wishes the girl a good journey. Elena is surprised by his behavior and doesn't understand why he does it. But the prince doesn't answer her and just walks away. Elena stares fiercely at his back, thinking that she's going to give him back that rudeness multiplied by three because she thinks she's being treated inappropriately. Immediately after the first prince enters his estate, he is approached by his butler, who informs him that he has received a message from the imperial palace. According to the butler, his majesty asks the first prince to come to his office. Lloyd looks a little angry, but also tells his butler that he's going to his father right now. Also, the guy is thinking about the fact that this is a chance for him. After the first prince entered his father's office, he asked him why he had been summoned. The emperor said there were rumors of a daily visitor to his palace. The guy says it's like that, and he's dealing with a fox he met recently. The emperor asks about it in surprise, but the guy says it's a fox with luxurious red fur and a difficult character. The emperor, who knows who we are talking about, is surprised that his son has now called Elena a fox, and he is also surprised that his eldest son is trying to tame a girl he thinks is crazy. Immediately, the emperor starts laughing at his eldest son and says he can do it because his mom was good at taming wild animals. The guy tells his father that he's a lot like his mother, so it'll be okay. The emperor thinks that Lloyd is trying to win the crown prince's fiancé to his side and is not even hiding it. In his opinion, it is a bold provocation. But also, the emperor does not understand what made his son, whom he considered a weakling, change so much. But the emperor doesn't care about it and thinks that he doesn't care about any of this. But at least it will make it more fun. He mentally instructs his son to pretend to be moderately intelligent, moderately ambitious, and moderately cautious. The emperor realizes that his behavior must be calculated, and at the same time he grabs the guy by the hair and emphasizes that he said he had a headache. Also, the emperor notices that there must be something different about her. Still holding his son by the hair and pulling him closer to him, 
The emperor emphasizes that something has changed in his mind. He wonders how big his son's goals are. But Lloyd says nothing to him and just thinks about something. The emperor asks the first principal to come back in a week for a meeting. Lloyd bows to his father a little and says that he will obey his father and come to the meeting. Then he just turns around and leaves his father's room. After he left the emperor's room, the guy thought about the fact that the first step towards success had been taken, and now he just had to turn the rest of his plan around. After that, the action of the story moves to the office of the crown prince. The guy is very angry because he also found out that his ex fiance is visiting his older brother. The boy immediately squealed and went into the office of his father, who does not fully understand why his son is so much agitated. But the crown prince gathers in his father's office and asks him how it could have happened. The father doesn't pay attention to his question at first, but says that it's only morning and his son is already drunk. And the guy is very nervous and clenches his hand into a fist because of it. The guy starts yelling at his father. He emphasizes that the emperor pretends not to know. In the crown prince's opinion, his brother is a scumbag who doesn't even deserve the surname Kartik. The boy also shamelessly asks his father why Lloyd, who in his opinion is a pathetic scum, participates in the meeting. Father first listens to his son, and then after a short thought decides to answer him, the emperor decides to answer all his worries with a question. He asks his son what the problem is and thinks that he may not be sure of himself. The boy is very surprised by such a question and says that it is impossible. The crown prince tried to say something else, but the emperor interrupted him and asked him what the problem was and why he had come to him with the appearance of a dog that had tucked its tail in fear. The crown prince, whose hand is still clenched, emphasizes that he is sure the emperor will regret allowing Lloyd to attend the meeting. But the emperor still remains calm and asks his son not to worry about it, for he never regrets a word he says. Then the still calm emperor tells his son to leave his office and go about his business. The crown prince does his father's bidding and leaves. The emperor, looking after his son, thought that in normal times he was pleased to see such monarchic behavior. But now this behavior was beginning to irritate him a little, but he still doesn't care. Because that's exactly what he needs at the moment. He doesn't care who rules the empire, a spineless man who buried himself in books and plants, or a bastard who is mad with alcohol and women. At the moment, the most important criterion for him in choosing an heir is his skill and ambition to make the empire more powerful and richer than ever. After a while, the crown prince came to his brother's house. The first prince's butler tried to greet the guy, but the guy yelled at him and ordered him to get out of his way. After that, the crown prince called out loudly to his brother. The guy walked into Lloyd's room where he was humbly reading a book and immediately tossed the book aside. Immediately, the irritated crown prince asked his brother, why doesn't he just realize his place? Lloyd still looks just as calm and stands up from his seat and asks his brother what he's talking about, with Lloyd calling him little brother, words that stun the crown prince. Because he didn't know what to say to his brother, the crown prince immediately grabbed his brother by his clothes and showing his aggression, asked him how he dared to talk to him like that. Lloyd immediately grabbed his brother's arm, making it clear that he would not allow himself to be treated like this, at which point the crown prince wondered very much where his squirmy brother had gotten such strength. Lloyd is as calm as ever and still holding his brother's hand. Emphasizing that the crown prince has a bad habit of spreading his hands, the guy looks like he doesn't see his brother as a rival at all. The crown prince looks at his brother even more surprised and wonders if he has lost his mind. According to the younger of the brothers, Lloyd has enough to live the life of a fool as he did before. He can't understand why his older brother is meddling in his affairs. Junior says Lloyd should just exist and die like a rat, like his mom did, according to Junior. If that's the way it goes, when he becomes emperor, he'll spare a worm like Lloyd. Lloyd removes his hand from his brother and realizing that there will be no constructive dialogue with him, says that he has no reason to listen to the crown prince's nonsense. The younger brother again gets very angry about it and calls Lloyd a brat. When the youngest of the brothers tries to leave the first prince's room, the latter unexpectedly trips him, whereupon the crown principal is poked and nearly falls to the floor. The first prince comes up behind him and mockingly says that it seems his younger brother is so drunk that he can't control himself. 
He also asks his younger brother if it wouldn't be better if he went back to his chambers. The crown prince is even more annoyed by his older brother's words. He thinks that Lloyd is a bastard and dares to treat him inappropriately. The crown prince looks at his brother and thinks that his behavior is unthinkable. He thinks that maybe Lloyd guessed that he was responsible for the boy falling down the stairs. But then Lloyd immediately turns around and asks his butler Dane to escort the second prince to his rest. Also, then Lloyd tells his angry brother that they will see each other in two weeks at the main meeting. The second prince picks up a bottle of wine that was on the table and throws it right into the wall. After the bottle shatters, the guy thinks about how his older brother is just a jerk and that he plans to make sure that he can't make fun of him anymore. Immediately after these thoughts, the crown prince asks the butler to summon the Marquis of Tennessee to him. The butler is surprised by this, but the second prince begins to shout at the butler and insists that he summon the Marquis to him at once. The action moves back to Elena's estate. One of the maids informs her that she has a guest. After the girl heard the name of the guest, she was very much surprised. It turns out that she was visited by a girl who introduced herself as Lady Lisa Tennessee. Elena accepted the girl out of politeness, but Elena thought about the fact that she had heard that the girl had been living a reclusive lifestyle lately. Elena knows that since that day, Lady Tennessee has not attended any tea parties. She knows that the rumored reason is that the number of invitations has been reduced for her. She says that she generally understands the purpose of the girl's visit. After these thoughts, Elena asks her maid Lena to bring Lady Tennessee to her room. After a while, Elena is already waiting for her guest in the guest room. After Lady Tennessee entered the room, she immediately emphasized that she had made an unannounced visit, but thanked the protagonist for willingly accepting her. Elena tells the girl that she doesn't need to thank her, because she's willing to accept the girl gladly at any time. Lady Tennessee emphasizes that she feels much better when Elena says these things, but Elena doesn't take too long and asks what the purpose of the girl's arrival is. The girl notices that the protagonist has a very impatient character. She suggests that they have tea first, and then, according to the girl, she will tell Elena everything. Elena looks at her with a kind of slyness and thinks about the fact that she hasn't gotten a concrete answer to her question after all. Lady Tennessee also noticed that the protagonist looks very glum. She says that her words may sound shameless, but she wants to return to the previous relationship with Elena. According to her, she used to be stupid, and asks if her words and actions hurt the girl last time. Seeing that it is so, she once again apologizes to the protagonist. Elena is happy to hear, because in her opinion the girl's actions exceed all her expectations. She realizes that Lisa's position in the society is getting weaker and weaker. The protagonist believes that the girl needs a lifeline. Lisa asks if everything was fine before the recent incident and emphasizes that she would do anything for the main character, just like she used to. But Elena does not even listen to her former friend, and emphasizes that this conversation is meaningless and not valuable to her. Lisa is of course surprised by such a sharp act on the part of Elena, but the protagonist who is about to leave notes that she does not need a man who is ready to stab her in the back, Lisa does not quite understand what it is about and is not interested in what the protagonist means. Elena doesn't give her any explanations, and touching her face, she notes that Lisa isn't as important to her as she's made her out to be. Elena also emphasizes that she doesn't think Lady Tennessee can do anything special for her. Lisa is even more angry at the arrogant attitude of the protagonist, and taking her hand off her face, says that Lady Rosaria will regret it very much. Elena again seems to mock her guest, and shows her that she doesn't believe her words. Then Lisa gets up from her seat and says that perhaps at this point she will leave, and she also emphasizes that Elena should not see her off. Lady Tennessee continues to be very angry, and leaves, while at the same time Elena wishes her a good journey in her back, obviously mocking her and showing her all her disdain for her. As the action moves to the estate of the Marquis of Tennessee, the Marquis says he is honored by the Crown Prince's visit to his estate. But the Marquis asks what business the Crown Prince is visiting him on. The Crown Prince is a little angry and thinks that the Marquis is a trickster, for he knows perfectly well the reason why the Crown Prince has come to him, but keeps hoping that the lad will complain to him about everything. The guy throws a stack of papers on the table in front of the Marquis and wonders, 
Does the vassal not understand the intentions of the Lord? The Marquis thinks about the fact that apparently the guy is not going to tell him everything. As a matter of fact, and wonders whether he should see how long the Crown Prince will behave like this, the Marquis takes one of the papers the Crown Prince threw him and says that he heard that His Highness Lloyd Carthica was also present at the last meeting. The Crown Prince is very angry at the Marquis's words and tells him that if he ever says Kartik's name after his brother's name again, he won't let it go. The Marquis also seems not to take the guy seriously and mentally mocks him and also thinks that the Crown Prince is still very young. Then the Marquis says that as far as he understands the presence of the First Prince is a personal order of His Majesty and the Emperor, the Crown Prince does not understand what the Marquis is driving at. Then the Marquis again pretends he doesn't understand anything and asks the Crown Prince what he wants to tell him. The Marquis asks, does the guy really want him to disobey His Majesty the Emperor's order? The Crown Prince tries to say something, but Marquis interrupts him and says that everything will be done the way the Crown Prince wanted. According to Marquis, he will remove the first prince at the request of the second. The boy is very surprised by this answer and again tries to say something. But just like last time, the Marquis interrupts him and emphasizes that he will go against the will of the emperor. But the Marquis hopes that the crown prince will remember how he helped him and put all his soul in the execution of the orders of the crown prince. Also, the Marquis of Tennessee asks the crown prince not to forget that he has a lovely daughter who is of marriageable age. We understand that this is Lisa, and we also understand that her father is now trying to marry her off to the crown prince. The Marquis then gets up and leaves, while the crown prince is angry again. The second prince is so angry that he clenches his hand into a fist again, obviously not liking this state of affairs very much. The guy thinks that Marquis is a real parasite, because the participation of the first prince will not be good for him, but ignores the facts. Marquis pretended to bow his head, supposedly patronizing the second prince, and yet dared to demand something from him. Also, the second prince is not impressed by the words of the Marquis about his daughter who has reached the age of marriage. He realizes that the Marquis wants to put her in Helena's place and become a relative of the imperial family on the line of the empress. The guy realizes that this is absurd and cannot understand why he should be engaged to the villainous. The guy again feels uncontrollable aggression. Because Elena is a girl who does not know her place, he kicks the table, which from such a strong blow flies off and overturns. In doing so, the crown prince realizes that something is definitely different from the past. He is annoyed by the state of affairs, and he realizes that he needs to get rid of this dissatisfaction somehow and his brother appears in front of his face instead of the table, lying bloody on the floor, as if he's guessing something, and realizes that everything will be solved as soon as Lloyd disappears. The action moves to the palace of the first Prince Lloyd. The guy knows that now behind the walls of his chambers are many guests. Obviously, they all have plans, how to use the return of the first prince. But Lloyd realizes that when he was wounded by his brother, who is to be the heir, all these people were gone, and now they have come back to him. He realizes that their plans are very obvious, but decides that it will be very interesting to see what they will tell him. It is obvious that all the attention around the prince is due to the fact that the emperor has invited his son to the main meeting, while two guys are talking to the butler. One of them resents that the butler is blocking their way, and says that he is the closest person to the first prince, so he should be let through. The butler asked the boys to wait for a while and informed them that His Highness was surprised by the sudden visit of all these people, which is why Lloyd ordered his butler to invite all these people to him one by one. The guy also says that if the people are willing to wait a bit, he will call them later, immediately after which the butler hurriedly goes into his master's room and leaves the guests outside the door. Then a man came out of Lloyd's office, and after everyone saw the strange look on his face, they started asking him how things were going with the first prince. Suddenly, the other guy started talking about how his highness has changed a lot. According to him, the first prince has become more noble and looks at everything with a confident look. Also, the guy emphasizes that the first principal was able to, another man doesn't believe his words and thinks he's talking nonsense. According to this man, the prince is the same as before. According to him, Lloyd is talking about something unbelievable as before. The guy starts to defend Lloyd 
and says that the second man is actually wrong because the first prince personally asked him about both economies in general, but the man who came out of the first prince's room says he's not sure what the guy says. The other people who were also waiting outside the door are very surprised at this and ask what the man is talking about. But the man says that the dialogues that this guy supposedly had with His Majesty the First Prince are a fabrication because he didn't talk to the First Prince about anything at all. According to the man, when he entered the room, the valet gave him a seat. Then he sat down directly opposite the prince. And then the prince did not say a word and just stared at the man for about 10 minutes while he was there. Suddenly, according to the man's story, after the prince had stared at him for 10 minutes, Lloyd got up from his seat and said goodbye to the man, smiling as he usually did. The men outside the door think that maybe the guy wasn't just smiling, but showing oppression. And the other man thinks that maybe the guy had a killer look. All the people are literally wondering why the descriptions of people who have already met Prince Lloyd are different from each other. The man who has already been to Prince Lloyd keeps talking and tells the others that he's not sure there's any change. Because in his opinion, there seems to be and there doesn't seem to be. All the people waiting outside the door are wondering if His Majesty Lloyd has really changed and what then might become of them. They wonder how His Majesty's changes will affect them. We learn that the influence of the first prince in general, these people need solely for their own benefit, according to their own words. They were on the side of the air because of the frequent fights for property. But if Prince Lloyd has really switched, maybe things will be different. They wonder what if the emperor called his eldest son into a meeting to test him. They realize that it will be very difficult for them to express their opinion and go against the second prince who is already recognized as the heir. One of the guys wonders if he should join the opposing forces again. The others also don't know what to do. They don't know if they should join the first principal, but they realize that maybe the emperor will favor the first principal over the heir. Basically, all of them are concerned with only one question, whether they can keep their power and the property they already have. Immediately after that, all the men decided to leave the waiting room. At this point, the prince, who was still in his room, says that their act was rather expected, for he knew that all these people were bugs and that they had no souls. But still the prince expected that at least one of them would be of use to him in the future. But all his hopes were in vain. At this time, his attendant inquired why the prince had met this man separately, for it would have been more convenient to bring them all together. The first prince explains to his butler why he did it this way. He asks him if he saw the expression on their faces when they came in one by one. The butler answers in the affirmative and says that he did notice their expression the whole time he was accompanying them. After these words, the crown prince asks his butler for his opinion. The guy doesn't know what to say at first, but he notes that at first these people pretended to be proud. But after a while, they calmed down and began to notice many things. According to him, they acted as if they were going to follow the first prince. At this point, the butler guesses what the first prince's plan was. He asks if Lloyd had deliberately shown them the old version of himself and acted like he was. The first prince says that his butler got it right and that it was just like that. Immediately afterward, Lloyd remarks that these men had probably come to see what was going on after hearing the emperor's rather unusual order. He said they had come to look at it and decide how they should proceed. After the butler had listened to his master, he told him that he believed that the people who had come to see the first prince had left in even greater confusion than before. According to Lloyd, after what they have seen, they will not give in to each other's opinion because of their two different views. And even if they agree on one opinion, there will be a whole different problem between them. Also based on the words of the first prince, because of the impossibility to be sure in judgments based only on assumptions, as soon as another point of view appears that does not coincide with theirs, doubts will immediately settle in their minds about their rightness. Then all these people will be confused, and they won't know what decision they need to make to keep things the way they are. Lloyd says that this is what he wanted, and let these people for once rack their brains over such a dilemma, the butler looks delighted. He realizes that with the help of the destroyed action, such a carefully thought out plan has been executed with success. According to the guy himself, he has too much respect for his master. 
But Lloyd points out that after all these people make their choices, they're going to be at an even greater crossroads and even more confused about what's going on. Dear friends, if you want to see the third part of the story, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Put a like under this video and do not forget that when under it will accumulate 40,000 views or 5,000 likes, I will definitely make for you another part of the part.